good morning afternoon or perhaps even evening to some of you and welcome to today's webinar where we're going to be discussing how to turn OTA lookers into direct bookers. My name is Darlene Rondo and I am the Vice President Best Practices for VFM Leonardo's online merchandising group and I'll be your host for today's event. A few housekeeping items before we begin. First, we're going to be recording the webinar and at the conclusion of today's session, we'll send you a thank you for joining us email with a link to that recording which you can share or listen to again at your leisure. Additionally, you have a questions dialog box in your GoToMeeting panel. And so as we move through our discussion today, please feel free to send in your questions. And we'll be addressing these questions actually throughout the webinar as well as at the end of the presentation. Before we continue, I'd like to ask the audience uh, to weigh in on this poll that I'm going to launch. And what I'd like you to answer is, what is your biggest challenge on the OTAs, the online travel agencies? And so there is a, a dialog box in your GoToMeeting panel where you can just click the uh, radio button and uh, weigh in on your answer. So you have three answers to choose from. How do I balance my marketing strategy on OTAs? How do I know how much to engage with OTAs? And then the third answer is, how do I keep content up to date on all of the channels? And so I see that the majority of you have uh, found uh, the polling questions and are weighing in. About half of you have uh, answered the questions so far. And it kind of looks like an even split so far. Um, amongst all three of the answers. How do I balance my marketing strategy? How to know how much to engage with OTAs? And lastly, how to keep my content up to date? So uh, we'll just give everyone another minute or so to um, weigh in on this first polling question. And it will help uh, myself and our uh, guest speakers today sort of gear our discussion based on what your answers are. So with that, uh, the majority of you have voted. And uh, largely, you want to know, how do I balance my marketing strategy on OTAs? So thanks very much, everybody, for um, our weighing in on that. And uh, with that, we'll proceed with the webinar. One more housekeeping item uh, before we begin is that uh, we're going to be tweeting during today's presentation. So please feel free to join in the conversation at hashtag VFML webinar. And so uh, first, I'd like to welcome Robert Cole. Robert is the founder of Rock Cheetah, a hotel marketing strategy and travel technology consulting practice. Robert has deep industry experience, which includes executive leadership positions with leading hotel travel and technology firms such as the Four Seasons, uh, Travel Resources, Sabre, The Neat Group, Sendent, and the Mark Travel Corporation. Robert speaks frequently at travel conferences and for the last two years Robert has been a keynote speaker for the Association of Travel Marketing Executives on the topic of social media versus consumer privacy. So welcome Robert, thanks for joining us today. Our, Thank you, darling. Thanks, to be Robert. Here. Our next uh, guest speaker, I'd like to welcome Glenn McDonnell. Glenn is the Managing Director of Marketing Programs at Best Western International with over 4,000 hotels in more than 100 countries. Glenn's primary objectives are to drive room revenue and guest loyalty through various consumer and business to business marketing programs, including programs such as AAA, AARP. Harley Davidson, as well as maintaining the relationships for major online travel agencies, travel meta search engines, and other third party distribution programs. Glenn is actually responsible for Best Western's field marketing group with 41 hotel marketing co ops across the United States and Canada. Prior to joining BW, Glenn served as Director of Travel Programs and Alliances at AAA and has held a variety of manage 
positions with United Airlines. Glenn, it's a pleasure to have you with us today as well. Thanks Thank for joining you. us. I appreciate it. And uh, so with that, I am going to transition the uh, platform over to Robert to talk about um, OTAs and to give us some background on his, uh, on his observations. Robert, you uh, now have control over the keyboard and the mouse. Well, let's see if that works. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Not quite yet, apparently. Mm -hmm. yeah, well, you, you know what? Maybe if you just, I can just say, please change the slides. Maybe that will be the. Sure. Yeah. We can Sorry. do that. Sorry about that. OK. And next slide, please. Well, thank you for everyone for joining. Um, in the hotel industry, online travel agencies can be a very controversial topic. So today I think I'll use an analogy that in many ways OTAs are like large Hollywood movie studios. Back in the golden age of film, five major movie studios emerged that dominated the industry. Um, the marketing distribution technologies developed by those studios created iconic movie stars, attracted millions of happy moviegoers, and that's lasted over about the last century. Um, our mature travel, well, online travel industry is beginning to look a little bit like those days. Priceline, Expedia, TripAdvisor, um, Google um, are all growing, and there are other ones, you know, kind of on the fringe of Apple. No one really knows what they're going to be doing, but could certainly play a role. But they're very powerful machines, production, distribution, promotion. They create stars, and they effectively sell the product. So, next slide, please, Starline. Sure. Oh dear. Well, this is this is, I believe, how some of the uh, hoteliers perceive the the OTAs. And so, like the movie studios, OTAs, and the meta search players are are very large and and powerful. Just to do a quick snapshot. Um, let's take a look at the the market caps for the publicly traded uh, OTAs. Priceline is over a fifty billion dollar market cap now, with about thirty six over thirty six million unique visitors. Um, that's with Booking.com, Agoda, Kayak, Rollcars.com rolled in. Um, Expedia is only about a seven point three billion uh, market cap, but don't let that uh, completely you know, shade your judgment. Um, they have over forty million um, U.S. unique visitors. And again, these are just U.S. U.S. stats. Um, TripAdvisor, um, being split off from Expedia, actually has a larger larger market cap now than Expedia, um, with 43 million, almost 44 million unique visitors. And then you start looking at groups like Google, which of course are not just working in, in travel, but with a 300 billion dollar market cap, 190 million. Yeah, 192 million unique visitors, um, and Apple even with 425 billion market cap, 600 million not necessarily unique visitors um, per month, but 600 million credit card numbers, which is a very very powerful figure. So I won't go too much into Apple. I just wanted to, to raise the uh, raise the point. Um, take a look at I that Apple's iTravel patents. And um, even if you look, Starwood and Hipmon just released very nice um, iOS 7 apps for the for the latest uh, version of that operating system. So, as a as a point of comparison, Marriott, Starwood are about 13 billion dollars in terms of uh, in terms of their total uh, total market cap. One point with this though is that the um, the major OTAs are about 14 percent of U.S. Um, hotel room night volume, or revenue volume, I should say. So it's not the vast majority. The vast majority is still coming through central reservations, property direct, but they are very, very powerful, powerful players. So the next thing that we need to look at is you know, how are they so powerful? Well, number one, they love media and they use it very, very effectively. In terms of their, their overall spend, um, Expedia spent last year $870 million on their total advertising budget, um, which works out to over $22 per room night that they that they booked. Um, Priceline 
is uh, actually more efficient. They're they're spending about eleven dollars and fifty cents per per room night, but they spent one almost one point three billion, um, which was a thirty yeah thirty nine percent increase year over year, um, and it comes up to two point six percent of Google's search advertising revenue, which are just staggering numbers. Um, thirty five million dollar offline spend in in U.S. Te um, television that sort of thing, and those stats um, exclude the new Booking dot com. Um, ad campaign. Uh, TripAdvisor is uh, getting a little mix as well now that they're public and out on their own. They're investigating a $50 million um, television campaign. So uh, big, large numbers. Yeah, I mean, all told, right, that's uh, $3 billion in online advertising spend. Uh, it's no wonder that seemingly every other ad we see is from one of these companies. And, and very, very difficult for even the major hotel brands to um, to really compete at that at that level. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, at this point, I just want to remind the audience that you have a questions dialog box in your GoToMeeting panel, and uh, I see many of you have found that dialog box. But please send in your questions as Robert's moving through his presentation, and we'll be happy to uh, tee those up as they come in. So, Robert, here is uh, your next slide coming up. Great, thank you. Now here's a uh, kind of a scary uh, page for a lot of the uh, a lot of the certainly the major hotel groups. Um, this is a, a recent study that I put together. It'll be out in a in a new focus rate uh, uh, study that's that's going to be published in the next month or so. Um, but what we looked at were the OTAs, meta search companies, anyone who was booking hotels, and aggregated all of their downloads um, from all the various app stores um, for smartphones and, and tablets. And we came up with a list. Um, if you take a quick scan down the list, you'll notice uh, there's one hotel group uh, that managed to be number 16, so no hotel groups were in the top 15 um, in terms of total numbers of downloads. And just quickly, you can notice that TripAdvisor um, it has about 20 times the download volume of the intercontinental um, apps, which uh, which came in at number 16. Um, but that isn't the whole story in terms of just raw raw downloads. You also have to look at the satisfaction level. There are six OTAs and meta-search groups that had satisfaction ratings exceeding eight on a 10-point scale, um, but and the intercontinental had the highest rating coming in at 7.5. Um, the ugly part is down below the group, and I won't single out any of the, the hotel groups, but Intercontinental had 63% and 73% more downloads than the next two highest ranking major hotel brands. So that 1.1 million was substantially higher than, say, the 600,000 that um, the group that came in next. Um, also, the hotels are suffering in terms of satisfaction. Um, for the top 10 hotel groups, their satisfaction scores, excluding Intercontinental, um, range from 5.9 to 3.6, with one major hotel group's frequent guest app scoring a 3.0, which was the low for any of the 40 apps studied. So that's a, uh, that's a concern. So um, the OTAs and MetaSearch folks are, are definitely ruling, ruling mobile when it comes to, to hotel-related bookings. Hey, Robert, we have a couple of questions that have come in. Uh, one from sure. Tony. He wants to know, how do you see the impact of MetaSearch engines on OTAs? Ah, that's a, that's a very good question, and um, I was just about to bring that up. What, um, Susquehanna International Group, which is a, a Wall Street analyst, um, equity analyst, um, did some research and they looked at Kayak and discovered that Kayak sends about 57 times more traffic to OTAs than to hotel brands, which is a, a staggering ratio. And TripAdvisor sends about 11 times more traffic to OTAs than, than um, oh, hotel groups. So 11x is, is still a, a very, very large ratio, but still it's one-sixth of, of the volume the kayaks I'm sending. Now, I think things like TripAdvisor Connect, um, you know, products like that will also allow um, much better distribution off of, the, off of um, say, TripAdvisor. So I would think that ratio would actually drop down as they can, they can facilitate more bookings to, uh, to individual properties and, and to their you know, representation groups or in their central reservation systems. But, uh, but right now, it's, it's swinging heavily toward the OTAs from MetaSearch. Excellent. 
Uh, and uh, Brenda also has a question. She wants to know what that satisfaction rating is based on relative to the uh, app downloads. Sure. Um, this, those stats were aggregated by a, a group called um, XYO.com. Basically, in the app stores, you can rate things on a you know one to five scale, you know that sort of thing. So it's fundamentally a, a, an aggregation of those ratings. And um, the way we pulled it together, it was kind of a weighted average. So if they had a huge number of smartphone um, downloads, not many iPad downloads. Um, the, the satisfaction was kind of balanced between the two, but uh, but overall, it's this isn't a perfect science on um, on looking at these. But again, this is one group that that studied all of these fairly accurately, so it's a it's it's the best we have. So. Excellent, thanks, Robert. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is one of my favorite graphics that you have up here oh. uh, from the Wizard of Oz, <laughs> clearly. And uh, here's the uh, well, here's the data that goes with it. The uh, the purchase path isn't isn't short or straight on this thing. This is a uh, this is a graphic that Expedia Media Solutions um, oh, produced, um, and it's it's very interesting because what this was an example of an actual shopping path of a of a user, um, and they actually eventually wound up booking a package on CheapTickets.com, but they went to 33 different sites before they actually booked, and it's very important to to look at this. Expedia is looking at this process very, very holistically. Um, the trip planning extends well beyond just travel sites. It includes retail, weather. People are figuring out you know, what should they wear, you know, they need to buy clothes, that sort of thing. Um, and the overall end and travel experience is much broader than just the kind of what um, Darlene and I worked together a long time ago at, at Sabre when Travelocity was launching. At that point, it was a three-step shopping process. It was shop, check, book. Well, now that's expanded maybe to about seven, seven stages, and it's a very large, uh, large process. Um, this aligns well with Google stats. Um, la latest Google stats. There should be some new ones coming out in the next month or so. Um, the typical North American, at least last year, the typical North American traveler visited more than 22 websites over 10 sessions when shopping for travel. And that wasn't just a leisure traveler. That included their their um, oh, corporate travelers as well. So there's a lot of churn, a lot of process going through uh, through people shopping for shopping for travel. So they're hitting a lot of different sites. Nobody really owns the traveler in this case. And what I find interesting about this path, particularly the notion that it isn't straight, is that when we look at some of the sites that travelers are going to, we see sites like Zappos and you know bathing suit uh, bathing suit uh, websites where you can buy your bathing suit for your trip. And I think you know when these stats are released from Google and some of the other research companies that talk about the shopping path, there are a lot of people. I hear say there's no way a consumer goes to 30 different websites before they make their booking and so I think uh, this is a really good depiction of the fact that uh, when those uh, stats are cited it isn't just a traditional travel website that they're going to but as you point out Robert you know there are a lot of phases during the shopping journey and so we have to think of it sort of mo more holistically and in a broader sense so that we can properly understand what these numbers all mean. Right. And at each of those points you can see, and, and people go back to the same website a couple of times and things like that. When you look through this they, can, they bounce around a little bit, but um, in many cases they wound up booking the hotel with air at cheap tickets. Well, they had opportunities to book at, you know, at booking.com, variety of other sites. Um, you know, across the across the way, and and didn't. So there are lots of different sales opportunities, but it also depends on where that traveler is, in in terms of their readiness to to actually transact too. So. Absolutely. Um, here's your next slide coming up. Okay. Great. Well, in this case, what sites do travelers choose? I, I don't think in this in this frame we really need to talk about loyal guests or part of loyalty programs, things like that. You know dedicated to the brands, but what about all those other folks who are um, brand agnostic? They're out there shopping, they want to they want to book a, a, a great deal, figure out what they're what they're going to do. And in this case, um, I put a little E's for Expedia or P for Priceline or O for Orbit, so that sort of thing next to the uh, next to the brands just to help help people along. But you can see this is sort of in leisure travel orientation. And Expedia 
when people are comparison shopping, about 42% of the time, and again, these are U.S. stats, um, they wind up at Expedia. Um, the one takeaway from this is if you look down the list, specific hotel brand website is only 23%. But more importantly than that, that 23% is spread across all the different hotel brands. So any individual hotel brand is a very, very tiny proportion of, of this overall uh, comparison for comparison shopping. Because, again, if you're a major hotel brand saying drive people to our website, that's great. If you're, if you're Hyatt, and that's a strategy, that's a very good strategy, and it makes a lot of sense for them. But if these guys are comparison shopping and not brand loyal, that kind of means that they also need to drive down to Marriott and Hilton and Starwood and all the others as well, which is which is a large task. Or they can shop across brands at, at an OTA. Um, the other st um, statistic which is interesting is um, MMGY um, does their portrait of the American travelers. And their study, um, the latest study, focused on the digital elite traveler. And these are the guys that they've got multiple devices and things like that. Um, but 53% of of that market segment, which is highly desirable, preferred shopping and booking travel through OTAs. So that's a again a very very powerful uh, powerful statistic. Interesting. Uh, we have a question from our audience. Uh, are these U.S. figures or worldwide, Robert? Most of them are U.S. and uh, I'd like to use the worldwide ones, but. Uh, a lot of the worldwide ones get very, very sketchy and unreliable. The U.S. numbers are pretty solid. Plus, the U.S. tends to lead the um, uh, lead the world a little bit in terms of uh, of OTA usage and things like that and, and growth rates. So. And uh, that last stat that you just uh, reviewed, could you repeat that for Lance, please? We uh, uh, if he wants to uh, oh sure the yeah context of it again sure MMGY um, does their portrait of the American Travelers study every year. And um, this year they talked about the digital elite traveler, which is a segment that uses multiple mobile devices, right? They've, they've got smartphones, tablets, things like that. Um, affluent, um, a very, very attractive market segment, obviously, for, for hotels. 53% um, of that segment preferred to shop and book through OTAs. So it's a... Uh, yeah, it's it's a very very powerful number, and actually, um, it's not just the not just the travelers who like the OTAs. Um, Marriott, which is obviously a very competent, large, sophisticated company when it comes to e-commerce, um, they've partnered for Brazil, their Brazil site with Booking.com, um, so now they can make reservations for the Marriott.br site um, in Brazil, make their reservations in local currency across all, all mobile devices. It's not Marriott who's doing is powering that. It's actually Booking.com, which is, uh, again, kind of a, a staggering revelation, I think, for a lot of folks in the, uh, in the travel industry that Marriott's obviously decided Booking can handle that a little bit better than they can. And uh, this seems to be a hot topic resonating with the audience. A few questions here, Robert. Uh, mm -hmm. Can you define business travel in this in this example? Um, in this case, um, this was a, a Google um, Ipsos study from last year. Um, I'd have to go dig out the um, exact uh, one, but this was basically online business travel. So um, I believe it's unmanaged business travelers. Yes. As, as opposed to yeah. People booking through, you know, American Express through their GDS, that sort of thing. So this is comparison site, comparison shopping online. And just to clarify, because we have a number of questions from folks um, wanting us to clarify, this slide talks about comparison shopping, not actual mm -hmm. booking on the OTA, right? Right, exactly. So these are the sites that, that people go to when they comparison shop. So obviously they, they total much over 100, 100%. So these are the folks who have, they've got a bunch of windows open. They're looking at Expedia, Hotels.com, um, or when you go to a lot of meta search sites, you have kind of that, ex I call it the explosion um, button, where you say open all of these and pow, all of a sudden open six OTA sites for you, that sort of thing. So, Right, excellent. Uh, and uh, again, lots of questions coming in on the topic. Uh, we're going to share Robert's information, contact information, with everyone at the end of the webinar. So for those of you who have some specific questions for him, uh, 
he'll be happy to uh, take them offline and we'll also be sending a thank you for joining us email with uh, follow-up answers to a lot of these questions that we don't have time to get to during today's webinar but here's your next slide Robert and the music yep. great and I'll, I'll keep moving forward so uh, Glenn has some great stuff so I'll try to finish off yep. the last few slides here so the the key is with this power of the OTAs what should the hotels do and and the bottom line is is really celebrate what makes you unique I mean compelling descriptions explain how you make the guests feel special simplify the travelers life satisfy the guests needs better than the competition it's not necessarily about facilities and things like that yes free Wi-Fi is important if you have it and that's that's all fine and good but most the most important thing is the traveler is the traveler themselves so um, engaging images that show your hotel in action um, you know the number of these uh, number of groups that they have a building exterior and it's like wow great you have a port kosher that's that's really terrific look at that awning um, that's not probably the best sales point for your for your property or the the interior images you, of course all hotels have these great architectural shots but there are no people in them and um, I think when you're really looking at it, you have to ask is that architectural shot more for the hotel who's proud of their facility or more for the guests who want to figure out what's the atmosphere in that room when it's when it's full of people what's the lobby like what's the bar like that sort of thing um, and then also relevant guest oriented um, you know video content I think a number of groups are doing great stuff intercontinental for a number of years has had their their concierge video guides that offer local tips I mean you have a face of a concierge that sort of thing telling you about all the great things in that destination and who's a better expert on the destination than the concierge at one of these hotels um, Four Seasons Buenos Aires does some great films of their gala events they're really great production value that sort of thing um, but then Best Western Plus in Sedona has maybe not the same production values of the, of the Four Seasons of Buenos Aires, probably not nearly the same budget for it, but a really terrific um, you know, video on the destination, how the hotel fits in, how the guests you know, can really enjoy the thing. And, and again, it's like the film studios, setting a nice script, directing it well, telling a story that matters to the viewer. That's really the, that's really the bottom line. And that, and you uh, just uh, hit the key point. It's about the hotel story, and all three of the examples you cited there do an excellent job of storytelling, which is why their interaction with the consumer is so successful. So, um, here's your next slide. Sure, uh, and, and the key is effectively communicate that message, not to yourself, not between your ad agency and your general manager and everybody gets it, what about those consumers who are staying in and the travelers who are staying in your hotels. So um, the big question, what story are you telling? Different channels may require slightly different messages. Um, the key is tailor the message for your audience through their platform. Um, it's And it's not just a, oh, we did this once and you forget about it. Um, you need to keep this maintained. If things get updated, if your, your sports bar is turned into a sushi bar, you need to get that information out effectively and, and make sure everybody knows, knows about that. If you spent hundreds of thousands of dollars doing that and it's a big plus for your hotel, people deserve and your, your customers deserve to know about that. Um, and also use all the available tools across all the the OTAs. Um, yeah, certainly those eight OTA resources are often used by meta search sites. You'll see uh, professional photos or something. You click on TripAdvisor, boom, Booking.com's photos may may show up. They they rotate through you know the various groups of what they do. Um, TripAdvisor supports hotel um, video posts um, produced by the hotels. It's a, it's a great opportunity. Um, and Google Business Photos um, now kind of a new thing you can do street view virtual tours inside of your hotel it's, it's terrific stuff you need to look into it and take advantage of these um, tools um, another one with Google is the, the knowledge graph which is that little film strip across the the top um, the hotel images are prioritized um, at the top and and really it gives a photo a rating numbers of reviews a street address um, but at least in terms of what I've looked at, I did a search for best luxury boutique hotel in New York City, um, and the graph carousel was great. It had a lot of boutique hotels. The Google Hotel price ads, not so good. They had the Days in the, in the Bronx, the Crown Plaza Times Square, Candlewood Suites, not really related to the search. So in those cases, the, the knowledge graph was much more accurate. 
Um, and then finally, really looking good attracts uh, attention. And it's not just looking good again to yourself. What segment are you targeting? Are you targeting LGBT families, honeymooners? Um, you know, make sure that the orientation is set up right. It's cropped properly, so you understand if if a lot of these OTAs, you know, things work better in landscape versus portrait orientation. And then, most importantly, descriptive titles, captions, tagging, that sort of thing. Very important for SEO. And some may say, why do you want to support the SEO of an OTA page? Well, that OTA page may rank very high. Um, in terms of the destination that you're looking at, and if you can get your hotel into there in the in the grand mix of things, um, that just that just helps. So, uh, oh, Darlene, I think you want to do the uh, your question here, right? Yes. Yeah, so um, I thought it'd be fun uh, for everybody on the line. The first person who can send in the correct movie title that this scene is from, we will send a Starbucks gift card to. So. Oh man, that <laughs> everybody is uh, the chat room is going crazy with this. Well, uh, Nicole, you are the first person to answer correctly that this is Princess Bride. So uh, we will uh, capture your email if you want to just send it to us in the chat box, and uh, we'll send you that Starbucks gift card. So thanks, uh, thanks for weighing in, everybody. We appreciate that fun thing. Okay, so in, in closing, I think you know, the relationships with the OTAs, um, is it really a, a true love or marriage of convenience? And I think only each hotel can, can figure out what um, what is best for them. Uh, but the OTAs they have strong traffic, strong advertising, they're dominating mobile, and they're able to do some very, very good, effective tactical promotions um, to shift share. And I think really, the, a, having a quality presentation across a guest's preferred channels, maybe those are different from your preferred channels, um, is very, very important. So, yeah, you can kind of look at it, do you want to really work at, at trying to convert somebody from, from using Expedia, which they like and may prefer to book direct, that may be a very, very daunting task as opposed to trying to do it, trying to do it uh, yourself and work through their through their preferred channels. So the key takeaways, um, they're very important distribution channels. Um, withholding quality content from those channels won't help drive shoppers um, to your website or you know, generate business. I mean, we haven't talked about the billboard effect much, which uh, Chris Anderson, Cornell professor, has, you know, come out and had a lot of research about if people are on OTAs since they shop across sites, you will get cross through, cross sell um, sales by people going direct to your site. But if you aren't in those channels, they won't see you, you don't exist. So um, no matter what type of property you are, working with the OTAs and MetaSearch sites can maximize your occupancy and profit. That does not mean you should just give up and everything goes to the OTAs. You should still develop your website, do everything great, but you also need to work with the OTAs very, very smartly. They can contribute a lot of business to you. Thanks, Robert. Uh, and that is a good segue to our next session, section that Glenn is going to uh, talk about. Tons of questions came in, uh, and as I said, we'll share Robert's contact information again at the end. Uh, but at the end of the day, it really is the hotel that presents the guest with a compelling, unique story on all the channels that the consumer is using who really wins the business. So. Uh, keep in mind, share a consistent story to travel shoppers across the web with V Network, at, which is included as part of your license when you subscribe to V Brochure. And now it gives me great pleasure to welcome back Glenn McDonnell, who is the Managing Director of Marketing Programs at Best Western International. And Glenn is going to um, uh, talk to us from a brand and property perspective on the subject of OTA. So welcome, Glenn. Thank you again, Darlene. And it was great to, to listen to Robert as well. I always get a lot of super new ideas every time I go. Um, Darlene, I'm having a little trouble. If you can mind advancing the slides for me. Sure. Yeah, and, and again, uh, not a commercial. But uh, I think just to give you an idea of the perspective that I, I bring to the table, uh, again, I uh, work for Best Western International. We have, uh, very proud to say, we have over 4,000 hotels in over 100 countries. And, and uh, we have actually, uh, you know, uh, basically product descriptors. So we have our Best Westerns, our Best Westerns Plus, which are, again, often found in city centers, and then our premieres, which are um, 
more on the upscale side and they are in more destination uh, areas. Why I tell you that is that um, we have a variety of uh, different ownership types and uh, we have people in small markets, large markets, busy markets, um, tertiary markets, and, and all of those, again, it's a, it's a matter of um, working with you know, who you need to in order to make sure that you're filling your rooms at night. So our primary objective with everything we do, and, and as hoteliers, the same for you, it'd be, you know, the goal is, is to get that room, uh, that hotel room filled, obviously at the best yield and the best rate. And occasionally, um, and, and of course, as uh, Robert so aptly uh, suggested, it's a highly competitive landscape, and there's a variety of choices for consumers, and, and the goal is, is again, to um, optimize your yield at your hotel, but uh, if you could go to the next slide, uh, Darlene. Um, as Robert had mentioned as well, the um, you know the OTAs and this, this the statistics here are really from 2011 and 12. And as Robert had indicated, it's probably up to uh, 12 to 14 percent. Now again, they you would think if you watch television that the OTAs were you know uh, you know that's where everyone booked, but it, it is small. It's growing um, in in the scheme of things. But what's also important, though, is that it, it can represent some hotels we have. It's a very big piece of their business. They're in uh, a market where there's a ton of competition, and they need to work with these uh, um, organizations in order to be competitive to make sure that their uh, hotels are full. We have other markets that uh, rely very seldomly on it. They're in very high-demand markets or a special, unique location. So, uh, again, it varies really based on the hotel. But it is something that uh, I think Robert so adeptly uh, mentioned is that you know withholding content from them isn't going to help. So at the end of the day, we want to maximize the yield. We want to fill our hotel rooms. And and so the what we also want to avoid, though I believe, and and this is uh, from my viewpoint, is that uh, you know we we don't want it to be a commodity. Uh, you know the hotels individually are unique. They are. Um, in a specific destination, they all have something special to offer, and I think the key is is to be able to tell that story so that to the consumer, you're not just a rate on an interstate uh, and a brand that you're uh, actually uh, a uh, you know that you're a place that you know they will be a guest in uh, during that night, which I think uh, VFM Leonardo helps us immensely do. So if we could head to the next slide. Um, and uh, before we continue, Glenn, we have a couple of questions. One from Patricia. She wants uh, if you could clarify: Are these BW figures or are no? This are is they industry industry wide. So this is actually from eMarketer. Uh, so it's just a swatch of a swath of uh, you know where the typically the bookings are going. So this is industry statistics uh, for uh, most likely the United States. And uh, it's a good contrast slide to what Robert presented in terms of where they were shopping. This gives us a view of actually uh, where bookings are coming from. So, you know, two very different things, right? Exactly. And, and again, recognize that, you know, a lot of larger hotels are going to be filled with meetings and groups and things along that line. That's why the direct uh, is, is such a large number. Um, and obviously, there's a lot of transactions on the brand website. So every hotel has a different business mix. But I wanted to give you a specific case study here where uh, we have one of our uh, a fabulous hotel. And yes, it is a port de <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it, it, just to kind of go from there. But it, it's the best Western premier uh, Eden Resort and Suites, and it's in Lancaster. And it's a really special property. And again, it, it's something that uh, needs... Uh, you know, it's it's a story that needs to be told visually, uh, very much so. So, on our website, obviously bestwestern.com, as you can see, we have a photo gallery and all of that. But what we do is we use actually, um, you know, uh, VFM Leonardo's tools to uh, truly kind of tell a larger story. So not only does it show the the standard photos, but it talks about the accommodations, the room types. We have rich media for uh, the um, you know, 360 degree views of the guest room, of the pool area, of the restaurant. And so it is a way to tell that story and really give, and if we get this in front of the consumer, uh, what it does is it, it definitely shows what a, what a phenomenal property this is. Uh, it also talks about area attractions and they can book through it as well. So there, you know, we use this tool again on our site. Uh, obviously to do it, but the the real value is that we're able to, to onward distribute this information. So if we could continue on, um, mm -hmm. so this is just one of the the 360 uh, view of the of the guest rooms. 
So next and I will I say, Glenn, that um, Best Western was uh, one of the brands, I think, that were in the forefront of the richer media, like virtual tours and uh, matching that with a story to tell the, the consumer, you know, the story of the hotel. And these are great examples of how you've done that very successfully. Exactly. And I think the, what the big value is for, again, this particular property is that um, we can control the message. So uh, we're, we know that uh, consumers on, I'll show a few examples of some of the major OTAs that we work with, but you have a Travelocity here where, again, we're able to show the same content, we're able to show the same photos, we're able to control that story and that message. And uh, so, again, it's, I think the, the highest value here is that it's consistently uh, distributed to these points. So a consumer who's shopping on Travelocity can take a look, can see this information, it, it, it knows it comes from the hotel, uh, and that it's consistently portrayed. You know, there are some sites um, that are using, you know, consumer-generated content, which is fabulous, but again, you know, photos have to be told a certain way, and uh, this way we, you know, we clearly control what we're distributing and who we're distributing it to, and and that they do get to see, uh, and it's their option of what they can see of, of all of those images. So next slide, please. And Glenn, you've mentioned control a couple of times, and there have been a few questions from the audience around that subject about controlling uh, their product on the OTAs. And so the point that you're making is that uh, this is a way to control what the consumer sees, how you tell your story, and how you're presented. Yeah, exactly, and um, and that that's I think the, a key point there is that, and the best part is is that we, um, you know, the hotel only has to do it once, and it's uh, live on all of these other sites, and VFM Leonardo does take care of that for us. So here's that, an example of Orbitz. Yeah, go sorry, ahead, go ahead. Yeah, that so, was one of the uh, poll questions up front: is what uh, what is one of your biggest challenges? And one of the answers that came in second was that controlling uh, my content on all of the channels. So um, I'm glad you mentioned that. Yep, absolutely. So this is an example of Orbitz, and if we want to switch to the next slide, yeah, there you um, go. TripAdvisor again, uh, again, no, no, no surprise here. Uh, I'll keep repeating myself, but the. Uh, you know the con message is consistently portrayed, and it's in the theme of the OTA that's that's providing it up. Uh, and again, that way I know that um, I, as the hotelier, you know, have control over what I'm serving up from there. So if you could head to the fine, final slide, um, and I, I think uh, we've we've covered this pretty much. But tell your story your way, and I think that's probably the greatest benefit is that. You know, we have to always, um, you know, if you think about how many hotels there are just in the United States alone, there's over 50,000 hotels. Worldwide, there's over 300 brands. So if you're an independent or part of a, uh, you know, working with a, a major brand, uh, you know, there's a lot of choice out there in the market. And uh, what we always want to avoid is to be a commodity. Uh, we want to make sure that we're um, not just a price and a logo uh, on, you know, on a, on a, at a destination. So we, we hopefully that people are staying there, they're, they're, uh, and that we're able to tell the story a little more significantly than it's just a room with four walls. Um, and as I mentioned before, there's a you know being able to share the message consistently, you know, is key. And it's uh, in this way again, it's whether it's photos, whether it's rich media, that uh, you know it is pushed out to all of those uh, destinations that Darlene had referenced earlier in that slide. And that's a critical message, so you're not having to worry about doing that yourself. It's, uh, you do it once, and uh, out it goes. And then lastly, I think you know, when we talk about the OTAs, and I think Robert uh, listed a lot of very compelling messages, that at the end of the day, you, know, you have to decide uh, how you work with and who you work with, uh, because again, ultimately, your goal is to fill those rooms. And, our philosophy in a lot of cases is we need to fish where the fish are. And so where there are customers looking to make a reservation for a hotel, I want to make sure that I'm visible there. And I want to make sure it's visible under my terms. So uh, again, I think that these are all some very compelling notions. Uh, ultimately, it's a business decision at the individual property level to determine where they engage, what they engage. But again, I think the key is, is we need to be able to share and tell our stories appropriately. So Darlene, I'll pass it back to you.
Thanks, Glenn. Uh, it's really important for the audience to hear from a leader uh, from you know one of the world's uh, uh, top brands as well as from a, a property perspective as to how you view the online travel agencies and give us a given us a very high level overview of uh, how important you see them and and the role that they play. So thanks, Glenn, for sharing. So it, just in the final minutes of our webinar, uh, I want to leave you with a few thoughts. Uh, while we while we at VFM do help more than a hundred thousand hotels around the world syndicate their photos to the entire V network, what we're really focused on is providing hoteliers with a storytelling platform. And we've heard from Robert and from Glenn how important storytelling is because that engages the consumer while they're shopping so you can have control over how you show your hotel, communicate the value you're providing, as Glenn just said, so you don't just sell on price because people don't just buy on price. And you're able to set yourself apart from the competition so that the shopper chooses your property with the certainty that it's the right choice for them. So one last poll I'm going to launch for the audience because it's really important to us to get your feedback on uh, how informative you found today's webinar. So I've just launched the poll and uh, you have three choices, very informative, moderately informative, or uh, you didn't find the content very valuable. So if uh, you could just weigh in, it helps us as we design content for future webinars and you know just to debrief on the content that we shared with you today. So we're uh, so we're uh, again thrilled that you joined us today, and uh, thanks for giving us your opinion on um, what you thought of the content. So it looks like by and large. Uh, most folks uh, found the content uh, quite valuable, so we uh, thank you for weighing in with us today. And uh, as I said, I'm going to um, share um, some uh, contact information with Robert and uh, uh, Glenn. Uh, also, I'd like to extend an invitation to join us on future webinars. We have one in October coming up on social media, and then the last one of the year will be on planning for 2014. A lot of you have asked the question, uh, can I get a recording of this webinar? Absolutely. We're going to send you an email with a link to the recording so that you can watch it again at your leisure or share it with others. So. Uh, here is the contact information. I'm going to keep this on the screen. We have one last question, and Glenn, I'll throw this your way first. Um, the question is from Oliver, and he's saying, you know, they work so hard at his company to direct bookings to their um, hotel, and you know, he's struggling with finding the right balance between, uh, you know. Uh, bidding on keywords and, and uh, combating that because as we saw the OTAs have a ton of money that they're throwing at search that's driving them. So any words of wisdom for Oliver? Yeah, it's a, it's a, uh, we, we struggle with that as well. And again, I think it's, you know, it's almost, I use it as like a mutual fund. You have to have a uh, fairly diverse portfolio uh, of, of tools. Ultimately, you want to drive them to your uh, site because it's your lowest cost of sale. Um, and, and, uh, we recognize that the key is, is that you, uh, uh, you know, it, it, it really depends. Our strategy, obviously, our primary strategy is to drive people to our own channels. And then obviously use these other channels to top off our business to make sure we're competitive and a variety of things there. So it, it really does need to be a combination. Uh, and it, candidly, it's getting more expensive to uh, market uh, in the digital space, especially with the, the bidding and the, you know, the, the, a lot of toll booths as we refer to them as. But again, I think it's a lot of uh, the strategy that in a lot of cases there's a real strong ROI for any of these uh, areas, but again, the the key is to reinvest a lot of your, um, you know, appropriate amount into marketing in order to make sure that you're able to tell your story, and that you use some of these channels, the OTAs, for some pieces of business during the year, or maybe a larger piece depending on your market. But you know, you should always be uh, in the in the market or uh, up for sale uh, in other channels as well. And there are ways to do that, uh, you know. Um, 
And but again, it is a very diverse portfolio approach that you'll have to take. Um, and uh, recognize that you know you'll want to make sure that you're investing your marketing dollars to your, uh, reinforce your lowest cost channels. Great, thanks very much, um, Glenn. Really appreciate your perspective because it is it's a complicated question, and uh, there's not a simple answer. But I like I really like your mutual fund analogy. I think that uh, does a good job at at summing it up. Uh, so thank you, Glenn, for joining us from Best Western. Robert Cole, thank you very much for uh, uh, your part in today's webinar. I know from all the audience interaction, uh, they really, really enjoyed um, the topic and uh, the content that you brought to the table. So thank you very much. To everyone on the line, uh, join us next time for another webinar. Um, Wednesday is hump day, so another couple days uh, before we get to the weekend, but thanks again for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.